The moment I realized something was off about my new roommate, Zora, was when she tried to put ketchup in her coffee. Is this not how you brew the morning warmth? She asked, genuinely perplexed as I pried the ketchup bottle from her hand. Her head tilted to the side like a confused puppy, except puppies don't usually ask existential questions about condiment-based beverages. Uh, no, I said, blinking. Most people just use sugar, or, you know, coffee creamer, not Heinz. She looked at the ketchup bottle as if she were seeing it for the first time, then nodded, her lips curving into an odd little smile. Fascinating. Earth customs are highly variable. That's when the alarm bells really started ringing in my brain. Earth customs? Who talks like that? Not normal humans, that's for sure. Maybe people who live in a bunker in Wyoming, but not a college sophomore with neon green hair and an affinity for 80s rock band t-shirts. When Zora moved in last week, I thought she was quirky. Quirky in the way people who crochet tiny hats for their pet ferrets are quirky. But this was different. There was something distinctly extraterrestrial about her. It wasn't just the coffee ketchup incident. There were other things, like how she stared at the refrigerator for a solid 10 minutes the other day, poking the light switch inside and giggling every time it turned off, or how she made a hasty retreat into the bathroom every time we watched nature documentaries, muttering about unlicensed galactic broadcasts. The strangest part? Zora claimed she was from Cleveland. No one from Cleveland acts like that. So naturally, I did what any sane person would do. I started investigating. By which I mean I googled, signs your roommate is an alien, while she was out on her nightly contemplations of Earth's orbit, which to be fair, could also just be code for taking a walk. Step one, according to my extensive internet research, was to observe her language patterns. Check. Anyone who describes things as fascinating Earth customs probably isn't from around here. Step two, dietary habits. Yeah, well, the ketchup and coffee thing was already exhibit A, and then there was the time she tried to cook spaghetti by submerging it in a bathtub full of boiling water. I mean, who even does that? I pointed out that it was impractical, but she just nodded, mumbling something about trying new liquid configurations. Step three, an inexplicable knowledge of advanced technology. Now, this one had me stumped at first because I hadn't seen Zora with any gadgets more advanced than her phone, which, as far as I could tell, was just a regular phone. Until I realized that whenever she touched it, the Wi-Fi got faster. Not just slightly faster. I'm talking download an entire season of a TV show in three seconds. Fast. I asked her about it once, and she blinked at me, wide-eyed, like she had no idea what I was talking about. Oh, that, she said. I simply asked the frequencies politely. Right. By this point, I was about 95% sure Zora was some kind of intergalactic tourist pretending to be a human. So naturally, I had to confront her. You know, because that always goes well in science fiction movies, right? I found her in the living room staring intensely at a jigsaw puzzle. She was holding two pieces that clearly did not fit together, like trying to connect a giraffe's head to a toaster. Zora, I began, feeling slightly ridiculous. Are you from Cleveland? No. She looked up, her eyes wide, like she had just been caught smuggling candy into a movie theater. Yes, Cleveland. Of course. Such a charming human locale. Okay, that was it. There was no way she was from Cleveland. Listen, I said, lowering my voice. You can tell me if you're not human. She blinked at me again, her face a perfect mask of confusion. I am a perfectly ordinary human being, just like you. I enjoy Earth activities such as pizza and doing laundry on Wednesdays. That was a red flag. No human actually enjoys doing laundry, especially not on a specific day of the week. But before I could push further, she stood up and started walking toward the window. I must go now, she said rather dramatically. I have orbit continuation duties. Orbit what? Walk. I mean, walk. She threw me a sheepish smile, then bolted out the door. I watched her go, my suspicions solidifying. I wasn't sure if Zora was an alien, a malfunctioning AI, or just an incredibly odd human. But one thing was certain. Life with her was going to be fascinating. 
As long as she didn't try to make soup in the toilet again. Zora returned an hour later from her so-called orbit continuation duties, looking a bit flustered, but armed with a new level of determination. I was still sitting on the couch, processing everything I had learned, or rather, suspected, about her true identity. I had gone from quirky new roommate to possible alien conspiracy in record time, and I wasn't exactly feeling reassured by her increasingly bizarre behavior. She plopped down next to me, her neon green hair slightly askew, like she'd run into the wind at full force. Her face was lit with the kind of intensity you see in people who are about to tell you a life-altering secret or ask you to join a pyramid scheme. I realized, she began, clasping her hands together awkwardly, that my behavior may have been perceived as unconventional by your Earth standards. Understatement of the century, Zora. But I assure you, she continued, it is entirely due to my upbringing, on the farm. Ah, yes, the farm. This was Zora's favorite explanation for all of her odd behavior. Apparently, she grew up on a rural farm somewhere in Ohio, though she never quite got specific about where. She claimed this mysterious farm was the reason she didn't know how to work a microwave, thought traffic lights were color-coded mood indicators, and once tried to release a blender back into the wild. I understand your suspicions, she said, leaning forward, her eyes wide and earnest. But everything you've seen, all the so-called strange behaviors, can be explained. The farm was isolated. My parents believed in alternative ways of living. You know, farm stuff, rural life. Uh-huh. I raised an eyebrow. So you're saying, growing up, no one ever told you that ketchup doesn't belong in coffee? Zora blinked, the smile faltering for just a second before returning. We had, um, limited access to resources, and sometimes, you improvise. That's what life on the farm is all about. Improvising. And the bathtub spaghetti thing? Water is water. Whether it's in a pot or a larger container is irrelevant. Again, farm life. I narrowed my eyes. And the fact that you talk to Wi-Fi signals like they're sentient beings? Her smile tightened and her eyes darted left for a split second. Um, yes, the farm had advanced technology, but we always treated it with respect. Like, like pets. I didn't buy it. Not for a second, but her insistence was impressive. Either she was the most committed method actor in history, or she really thought this farm excuse was going to hold up under scrutiny. For the next few days, Zora doubled down on her, I'm just a quirky farm girl routine. She started dressing like she was auditioning for the role of village peasant number four in a low-budget play, wearing gingham dresses and boots. At one point, she even tried to hand milk a carton of almond milk, claiming, it's how we did it on the farm. But despite her best efforts, the facade was cracking. I could see it in her eyes, the growing tension, the way she fidgeted whenever I asked about her family or the farm. Something was bubbling beneath the surface, and I knew it was only a matter of time before she slipped up. Then one night, everything came to a head. It was late, like, really late, and I had just settled into bed, drifting off to sleep, when I heard a noise. It was subtle at first, like someone trying to tiptoe across a squeaky floorboard. My eyes fluttered open, and I glanced at my door. The knob was turning. Slowly, I sat up, heart pounding. Zora, I called out, half expecting her to burst in with some absurd excuse about needing to borrow my toothpaste or something. Instead, the door creaked open just a fraction, and there was Zora, standing in the doorway, silhouetted by the hallway light. Her face was flushed, her usual wide-eyed expression now tinged with something... different. Zora, what are you doing? She stepped into the room, biting her lower lip in what I assume was an attempt to look endearing, though it mostly just looked like she was contemplating whether or not to devour me whole. I... She hesitated, her voice lower than usual. I can no longer... Resist. My brain froze. Was she about to... No. This couldn't be happening. Zora continued to approach, her steps deliberate and oddly graceful. You see, I've been trying, trying so hard to maintain the charade, to live as one of you. But your presence, your 
human qualities are too much for me. I've been drawn to you. Uh, drawn? I squeaked, pressing myself against the headboard as if I could phase through it and escape. She climbed onto the edge of my bed, her eyes glowing. No, seriously, glowing. With a weird kind of luminescent energy. The truth is, I'm not like you. I'm not from Cleveland. I'm not even from this planet. Called it. Zora sighed as if unburdening herself from a secret too heavy to bear. I am from Glorthak 9, a planet in the Andromeda Quadrant. I was sent here to observe humans, to blend in. But now, she reached out, her hand hovering dangerously close to my leg. I can't maintain the disguise any longer. My true nature, it compels me. Compels you to what exactly? I asked, trying not to hyperventilate. To be with you she said, inching closer. I've watched you, studied you, and I can no longer resist your... Okay, stop, I blurted, my mind racing. Zora, I'm flattered, really, but... Her head tilted, confusion flickering across her glowing eyes. Is this not how human mating rituals begin? I was told, nope, nope, definitely not how we do it, I said, sliding out of bed and backing toward the door. This is not how anything begins. At all. Ever. Zora blinked, then let out a frustrated sigh, slumping down on my bed. I have failed at blending in, haven't I? Yeah, big time. She pouted, crossing her arms. And here I thought I was doing so well. The farm story was foolproof. I shook my head, still trying to process everything. So, you're really an alien? Yes, she muttered. And I'm not even from Cleveland. I stood there staring at Zora, who was now pouting on my bed like a defeated child after realizing their magic trick had been thoroughly debunked. Her glow had dimmed, both metaphorically and literally, and for the first time since she'd arrived, she looked vulnerable. And somehow, against all logic, I found myself feeling sorry for her. Sure, she just admitted to being an alien, from another galaxy, no less and she'd tried to sneak into my bed in what she clearly thought was some inner species romantic gesture, but there was something oddly sincere about her confusion. She wasn't some sinister invader trying to steal Earth's resources or turn us all into human-alien hybrids, I hoped. No, she was just Zora, a weird, green-haired, ketchup, coffee-drinking alien who had clearly bungled her mission to blend in with humans. And in a strange way, I could relate to that. I mean, who hasn't felt like they don't fit in at some point? I sighed, rubbing the back of my neck awkwardly. Look, Zora, I get that you're trying. I really do. And honestly, the whole alien pretending to be human thing, it's a kind of impressive. You almost had me convinced for a while. Her eyes brightened just a little, and she looked up at me. Really? Well, maybe not the whole time, I'd admitted, sitting on the edge of the bed. But yeah, I can see that you're putting in effort. It's just, the way you're going about this, it's a little off. I'm not Zora tilted her head, listening intently like she was trying to absorb every word. I apologize. I have clearly misunderstood your Earth customs. My research data on human mating rituals must have been outdated. I winced at that. What exactly did your research say about, uh, mating rituals? She blinked a few times. That humans often engage in physical closeness, typically in bed, following a period of verbal communication that involves shared interests and, what was the phrase? Banter. I snorted despite myself. Banter? Yes, she said, suddenly animated again. I studied hours of it. I believe it was referred to as sitcoms. Oh, for the love of... I had to laugh. Here was this alien trying to figure out human romance based on reruns of Friends or The Big Bang Theory. No wonder she'd been so confused. Okay, well, for starters, I said, human uh, mating rituals aren't exactly a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. There's a lot of nuance, and it usually involves mutual feelings and uh, consent. Zora nodded seriously as if she were taking notes. Consent, right, very important. But that doesn't mean 
I added quickly, feeling my face flush, that you can just sneak into someone's bed and expect them to, you know, go along with it. Her shoulders slumped again. I see. I truly have failed. She looked down at her hands. I just wanted to understand, to experience what it means to be human. I was curious about you, and I misinterpreted things. I apologize if I made you uncomfortable. I let out a slow breath, the tension in the room easing. It's okay, Zora. You didn't know. But look, if you really want to understand humans, it's not just about the physical stuff. It's about connection, talking, getting to know someone, learning to, well, be patient. She looked up at me, her eyes softening, the glow completely gone now. Connection, she repeated. I like that concept. Yeah, I said, suddenly feeling a little less awkward. It's kind of important. For a moment, we just sat there in silence, and I realized that despite the weirdness of the situation, Zora really did seem to want to learn. I could see the effort, the confusion, but also the sincerity. She wasn't trying to manipulate or trick me. She was just trying to fit in, in the only way she knew how. Maybe, I said, breaking the silence, we could start over, you know, as friends. Zora blinked. Friends? Yeah, I said, smiling a little. You know, people who hang out, talk, get to know each other. No sneaking into beds involved. She tilted her head again, processing the concept. Friends? She repeated thoughtfully. Yes, I like this idea. We could engage in more banter, perhaps? Exactly, I said, standing up. Banter is a great place to start. Zora's smile returned, wide and bright, and this time it looked a lot more human. I look forward to this new phase of our interaction. I chuckled. Me too. As I headed back toward the door, I paused and glanced over my shoulder. And hey, for what it's worth, you're not doing so bad at being human. You're just a little offbeat, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Zora grinned. Offbeat? I shall add that to my research notes. I left her there feeling oddly content despite the absolute chaos of the night. Maybe living with an alien roommate wasn't going to be so bad after all. Sure, there'd be some misunderstandings, and I'd probably have to explain that toilets aren't for soup more than once. But at least she was trying, and that was more than enough for now. As I climbed back into bed, I couldn't help but smile. Life was about to get a lot weirder but maybe that wasn't such a bad thing. Then as I closed my eyes, something strange happened. I could feel this, very light touch moving up my leg. I quickly turned on the lamp beside my bed, and as the light from the lamp illuminated the room, nothing was there. Soon enough, I settled back down to go to sleep. Then it was back, that same feeling. Before I could act, the unseen force pinned me to my bed Soon fear was replaced with excitement. The best way I can describe it was like a very hard, hot, wielding rod piecing a ripe, juicy watermelon, but it did not burst and then tighten around the wielding rod, with the watermelon moving at supersonic speed on the hard wielding rod. But nothing was there, just the intense feeling. And after that, while I was catching my breath, I heard a faint giggle coming from Zora's room, followed by a whisper. Did you enjoy that? I could not help myself and decided to show you how we aliens do it. I was speechless and out of breath. I could really get used to this.